I'm Bennett, and this is a special edition of Living My Alaska from Denali National Park. Spectacular. <laughs> yeah, it is. Join us as we tour the park. We find some epic scenery, and we spot some beautiful wildlife, all while relaxing in our cozy camper van. Let's go. Oh, honey, it's caribou. Look at that. <laughs> oh, they're running away. Hello, Mr. Caribou. Those are wild caribou on the side of the road. Oh, we're almost to Denali National Park, about an hour away. We just spotted just wild caribou walking on the side of the road. <laughs> All right, we got all our stuff. We got our little park pass, our reservations. Beautiful Denali National Park here. It always feels like you're on some grand vacation adventure. This is our campground for the evening. This is Riley Creek Campground in Denali National Park. We've got Vanna Grayling set up. It's going to be a beautiful spot. There's a squirrel in this tree that's pretty upset with me. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> We're setting up this camper van. We're here for the next 10 days. And it's time to cook some dinner. Let there be light. Okay, so the process of setting up camp for the evening at the Riley Creek Campground in Denali National Park. Dawn is putting our window insulators in the windows and I have the honorable task of making dinner. Did we read the instructions? No, nobody needs to read the instructions. You know what to do. Good? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if we can even call this camping. Would it be glamping? Glamping. And even better, have the boss lady serving me dinner tonight. What are we having, love? Well, I slaved over a hot microwave for your stuffed bell peppers. In rich tomato sauce, apparently. Yep. What are you having? Sounds very steak and, and mac and cheese. <laughs> very locale, very delish, I'm sure. Very, very healthy, heart healthy. We've been on the road all day and it's after seven o'clock at night and we're tired. So this kind of stuff really helps, but we're not always going to eat like this. And maybe tomorrow night, I'll show you guys how to cook reindeer sausage jambalaya. Yes. Should be fun. Okay, see you tomorrow. Little traffic jam inside Denali National Park. Usually what happens when people are pulled over like this, there's some sort of a wild animal in the bushes running around that people like to see. She's moving them off into the bushes. She's safer here next to the road because the bears and the wolves love to eat baby moose and so she has a better shot of those little babies surviving if she hangs around with us. So down in this meadow everyone, I don't know if I can, about where the tip of my finger is there's a grizzly bear. in Denali National Park. Been here for, um, I don't know what, four days now. Before we head out to the Savage River Campground, we're gonna make a detour into the Denali National Park Visitor Center. They have a fantastic little museum in here. Visitor Center, straight ahead, got it. This is the busiest part. It's basically the hub of Denali National Park. The buses all pull up right here in front and dump all of the tourists in here. So this is where you're going to see most of the people. <laughs> we are here and we are going, where is uh, Savage River? It must be, this is the Denali Park Road. So we're going somewhere here. How about this for an evening hike? Gorgeous. Spectacular. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'd love to know if there were fish in that river. Well, stick your GoPro down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I seem to remember last year this was all covered in ice and we couldn't walk this far. She's a woman of few words when she's in the wilderness. 
She prefers to listen to the sound of the river instead of my voice. No comment. I'm gonna take your advice and go stick my arm with the GoPro down into that water and see what's under there. Let's see if I can do this without falling in. Whoa. Whoa. A bad way to spend the evening. It does wonders for the heart and soul and the wind running through these trees clears your mind. We're gonna head back? Yeah. By the way, great little day pack made by Seek Outside. I believe this is a Dyneema material. Super lightweight, water resistant, very durable and I like it. Seekoutside.com. Good morning from Denali National Park, setting up camp. This is a little folding table made by a company called Nemo. This is Coleman propane, small little canister, fits into the jet boil. Super excited to use this thing. This is a little Coleman, Coleman oven. And it folds out and I also found this at the Talkeetna gear shop in Talkeetna, Alaska. Hard to find. So we're trying out the new Coleman portable oven. This thing folds up, it's made out of metal. It's sitting on our jet boil propane fired stove. And we're trying to get the heat up enough. We've got biscuits and hash browns in there. I also have some fancy pork breakfast sausage. And the temperature is very slowly moving up. Okay, so my oven on the fire didn't work so good. Worked great for biscuits, not for hash browns. So our first attempt at breakfast with the Coleman baking oven was somewhat a success. It did really well on the biscuits, did not have enough heat to finish the sausage and the hash browns. So I had to grab a cook stove in the pan and there's something about the way things taste out here. They just taste better folks. And this is breakfast in Denali National Park and as we say on Living My Alaska, manger. The bears can smell this and they love this food. So we do our best to pick this up after we're done. One of the favorite things I like to do when I'm in national park like this or camping otherwise is lay in my hammock. This is an eagle nest, double nest hammock. Comes with these straps to hang around the trees. It might sound funny, but on these somewhat warm days, there's still cool air coming through here. And if you try to lay in this hammock, You'll get cold pretty quick. So what I'd like to do is bring a little bit of a quilt with me. Oh, it's fantastic. Bad. 
We're so glad you can join us on this hike on a beautiful May day, springtime day in Denali National Park with Living My Alaska. This hike is near the Riley Creek Campground. Look at this. But I believe this is called lichen. And if I read this correctly, it's a high source of vitamin D. I believe it's like a mushroom. Maybe if somebody knows for sure, put a, in the comments and a favorite of the caribou herds. It's early spring, so there's not much in here, but eventually this will all be berries. And this is either a low bush cranberries or maybe even blueberries. I'm not sure by just looking at it here. So again, if anybody else knows exactly what this is, maybe you can put it in the comments and enlighten us. And come this fall, this will be full of berries. These pretty little white flowers popping out. What are these, honey? I don't know, honey. You don't know? Well, we know what this is, right? This is a land survey marker from when they were 1923, General Land Office Survey. This is when they were marking the boundaries of the park. This is an absolutely beautiful susp suspension bridge. It's made with cables and timbers. Another look at the suspension bridge that we're about to cross. And it's absolutely fun. It bounces as you go across it. So it gives you a little bit of a feeling of adventure. I assume this is built by the Corps of Engineers. Our US Army Corps of Engineers are a group like it. Shout out to retired U.S. Army Colonel, Mr. Jim Sherman, engineer, longtime engineer with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and a relative of my beautiful wife. <laughs> it's bouncy. <laughs> I do not want to drop this GoPro. I'm holding on. Isn't that gorgeous? Just another day in the life of living my Alaska. <laughs> it's really fun, Amazing. isn't it? Yeah, Just it's a part of why we are living my Alaska. Why we made these sacrifices and the hard choices we made. Leave our comfort zones, put priorities in place, and this is the reward. It's interesting, this is a story about the doll sheep being overhunted and, and Charles Sheldon, who I believe was a hunting guide, lobbied Congress to create the game refuge. That's what they used for a camera. <laughs> I love this. This is really beautiful. So this is where we are right now. And we're going to the Savage River campground tonight and then Teklanika later this week. Yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful dog site, really well made. Okay, a lot of folks in there, a lot of people. D Denali National Park Visitor Center, a lot of great stuff in there. We had to go through pretty quickly because of the crowds, but I think we got quite a bit for you guys to see. Hope you enjoy it. Tonight we're making reindeer sausage jambalaya. I've already chopped my Reindeer sauce. This is an Alaska reindeer sauce. You can buy this at Three Bears grocery store throughout Alaska and other places. Pre-cooked wild rice. I know that's cheating. Pre-cooked white rice. Liam Perrin's. Nothing else. Just this. Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. No other brand. And the original Tony Sachery's Cajun seasoning. You always brown your meat first. And then you create something in the bottom of the pan called a fond. It's basically the burnt parts of bits of meat that get stuck to the bottom of the pan. And after that happens, then you dump all your vegetables in here. And as the vegetables cook, they release a little bit of water and all that fond comes off the bottom of the pot. And that's where all your seasoning and your flavor is for this dish, folks. And so that's the way to do it. That smells incredible. It's already starting to brown. Our sausage is starting to brown. This is the reindeer sausage made by Alaska Sausage Company. And that's what you want all of your pieces of sausage to look like, between that color and that color. This is my bag of pre-chopped onions, garlic, 
bell pepper, green onions. And that's what we'll put in here after we're done cooking the meat. A little less noisy now that our generator is not running anymore. Sausage is ready to be pulled out of here. We'll set it aside. Tony Sachery's lightly seasoning, folks. Lee and Peran's Worcestershire sauce. We want to brown this to where it's almost cooked, just like the sausage. The reason we do the sausage first is because it has the most grease in it. And we need a little bit of grease in the bottom of this pan to cook and flavor this. This is chicken breast, which is white meat chicken, and it doesn't have much flavor, and it's very lean. And so we want the sausage grease to do this. We've got it seasoning. We're going to brown this. And then the third step is to add the vegetables. So our chicken is starting to brown nicely. And as you can see, it's changing color. And you want it to be almost fully cooked because after you cover this lid, we turn the fire off and just let it sit and soak or maybe just a very low fire. So it's not really cooking anymore. It's just when we dump everything else in here, we want that rice to soak up all of the good flavor that's in this pot. So you want this cooked before you do the next step. Okay, so that chicken is just about ready. So I'm going to spoon this out into there. And the reason I spoon it out and I don't dump it in because I want all that juice to stay in that pot for the next step. And as you can see around the edges of the pot, it's starting to turn brown. That's what's called the fond, and that's what gives you so much flavor. That's what you want. What we have here, folks, is all of your vegetables. So you have bell pepper, green onion, white onion, or yellow onion, whatever you want, and garlic. And that is where so much of the good flavor, this brown stuff all along this edge right here, that is what you want to scrape off as these vegetables release their juices. You know the vegetables are ready for the next step when everything is just about clear and reduced to about half its size. And as you can see, all the brown stuff is coming off the bottom and the sides. And that is what you want because that gives you good flavor. Starting to look really good in there, guys. We're almost there. We're on full high heat, speeding up the cooking of these vegetables, and it smells absolutely amazing. Notice I've put very little seasoning in here. The misunderstanding about Cajun food is that Cajun food is spicy, and that's not necessarily the case. There's a little bit of spice, but just enough to add flavor. This reindeer sausage, from Alaska Sausage Company is already spicy. I've added a little bit of seasoning to that, and that's gonna be plenty in this. You may be wondering why I'm cooking Cajun food. Cajun food is one of my favorite things to cook because it reminds me of home and my childhood. I grew up in deep south Louisiana between the bayous and the swamps and the rice and crawfish fields of South Louisiana. My parents spoke French before they spoke English. My grandparents spoke French very fluently. and My great-grandparents barely spoke English. And they really knew how to cook, folks. I learned, I learned early on that South Louisiana was a very unique place and I understand why. So as I've traveled around the world, I've brought my traditions with me and I've adapted Cajun style cooking to all sorts of things that we found all over the world, including in Alaska. And it's my wife's favorite thing that I make is chicken and sausage jambalaya. In this case, reindeer sausage jambalaya. The water is gone, so it's time to dump your meat back in. So we dump all of the meat. Don't leave behind those juices. And we dump in our chicken. And turn the heat way down. And that's what it looks like once it's all stirred up. I'd prefer to have a little bit more vegetable in there, but this is what we have. And so now it's time to add our last ingredient, and that is long grain white rice. And that's what it looks like. And you turn your heat way down, turn that all, mix it all together, and what happens now is that white rice will suck up all the flavor and the juices from all of this delicious meat and seasoning and vegetables that we put in there and give that about 10 to 20 minutes to cook. And now we're cooking it all down. I've got it on a medium to high fire. And what I want to do is brown all this one more time while keeping it stirred so it doesn't burn. 
and then we'll shut the fire off, put the lid on it, and let it soak for about, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. You can see as we're cooking that white rice is starting to change color from a bright white to a dull brown color. And that means it's soaking in all the delicious juices that are floating around in this pan. And that's where we get the delicious Cajun jambalaya flavor from. A little bit of a taste test. As you can see, we're just boiling and frying the final creation. We're gonna let this cook for a while, but it's time to taste this. Make sure it's delicious. Mm. That reindeer sausage is a little bit spicy, a little bit greasy. Got the delicious chicken in there and all that rice. And as my old grandmother, my old Cajun grandmother used to stay in South Louisiana, mm. ça c'est bon. Thank you so much for watching as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through the last frontier. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living my Alaska. See you next time.